Okay, he's a senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter Medical School. Fantastic to have you on the programme. Always really happy to see you. What do you make of these findings about long COVID? Has anything surprised you? No, and it, it is affirmation again, Maria, that uh, long COVID ought to be taken seriously. And really, my reading of the respiratory uh, Lancet paper is that whilst we can pick up some organ damage that correlates with signs and symptoms of long COVID, there are probably other things going on as well in long COVID, which thus far we have not picked up, i.e. blood markers or some other tests that would indicate to us that there is something still going on in people who had uh, um, uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection. Absolutely. And this was uh, my initial reaction when I saw this news because I just thought, OK, how much is there that we still don't know? Because I've had COVID. So many people I know have had COVID and people's health and small things like maybe concentration, um, hair loss, um, things that aren't affecting these big, big organs that this report is talking about. And I just think there's so much, not from a clinical point of view, just anecdotally, that we just don't know, right? You're absolutely right. There is what we know, and then there is what we don't know. And you're so right. You know, these things like cognitive deficiency, tiredness, lethargy, mm. uh, unexplainable symptoms, and you, you, you mentioned hair loss, and I would concur that there is an ongoing immunological process, and we don't have a full understanding of it. So are tests still happening to see uh, more investigations, to, you know, like the one we've seen here by the Lancet Respiratory Medicine, to see how much more there is to learn? There is a lot more to learn, and I'm hopeful that we will find both uh, markers and then the ongoing pathology uh, that we can then tackle and make those people who are unwell better. Mm -hmm. And only this afternoon, I was talking to some colleagues and uh, you know, we discussed and we said, look, one of the things we have found, for example, is returning back to physical activity also improves long COVID health. And I can concur with that in that, you know, it's good for mental health, it's good for physical health, it's good for resetting the, uh, the immune system that may be reacting in some way that we don't understand. So definitely, Maria, exercise, fresh air, socialization is also probably a good thing for resetting whatever that is going on in a uh, long COVID sufferer. Not everyone gets long COVID. That is also an important point to make. And how do you know if you have long COVID or a degree of long COVID or, or, or are there degrees of long COVID? So the World Health Organization and other clinicians say that if after uh, three months of your infection, you still have certain signs and symptoms, it may be long COVID. And the key word also is may be. So it's things like uh, cognitive decline. In other words, that brain fog we often hear mm. of, that neuromotor, uh, uh, decrease in neuromotor skills, i.e., you know, those fine things that we do with our hands. And then that complaint of, I feel tired, I feel worn out. All of those are the general vague symptoms and signs of a long COVID persistence after a COVID infection. Dr. Bharat Pankania, thank you so much for joining us today on TRT World. Really appreciate your time as always. Thank Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.